Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Nick Bohr, who's the founder and CEO of Inspire Wealth. Nick, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you having me back. Hey, you're welcome. And I want to talk to you about the new podcast that you are launching. So we're on a podcast talking about a podcast. And that's just the way that we um, that society really business is going these days is people don't have time for a lot of things. But boy, they can listen to an audio, they can listen to a podcast while they drive while they work out while they work, actually. So I'm excited to hear about your vision for uh, your podcast. Give us a little bit of background on that. What made you think, you know, one day, hey, I want to start my own podcast. Uh, you know, Mike, it, it goes into everything I do from educating people, educating clients, educating yeah. potential clients. It's it's all about, you know, in my 20 years of this industry, I've seen a lot of thought leaders. I've seen a lot of successful business owners. I've seen and met a lot of successful financial planners. But my vision is to be able to bring all of them together almost like the the, the plan for the podcast is really to look at it as I want to have successful business owners. I want to have thought leaders on. I want to have uh, people on my team, different advisory uh, advisors that would be part of the business owners team. So examples are CPAs business attorneys, um, uh, property and casualty commercial, uh, property and casualty agents, people that have really become experts in their areas uh, of their field. And the the biggest reason for that is, is over the 20 years I've been doing this, I've seen a lot of um, not only education, but lack of coordination. So yeah. To, to, yeah. To, to be able to, to bring every member or every potential member of the business owner's advisory team together, it, to me, is just so important, uh, especially as the business owner has achieved some success. And now they're, some of their concerns and some of their struggles have changed a little bit since when they first started. And they're starting to think of things like exit planning or succession planning or how do I attract key employees or how do I retain key employees? What are some of the tax planning strategies that I should be thinking about that my CPA hasn't brought up to me? Because up until now, I, 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 you know, I just kind of got into where I'm making really big types amounts of money to where I should really start thinking about some of the advanced tax planning strategies. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, it's almost like you, you think about, um, you know, zooming out to a 30,000 foot view. You get so into the weeds because I'm, uh, you know, got my sleeves rolled up and nose to the grindstone running my business. But when I can zoom out and kind of take that perspective of, ooh, I do need to consider this piece of my business and that piece. And then even more so to see how they all integrate and work well together. So I just really love that that concept of uh, bringing business leaders and advisors together, teaching and learning even from each other because guess what you mentioned cpas and business attorneys and property and casualty each one of those entities can teach business owners but they you guys can also collaborate and learn from almost like a live mastermind kind of appeal i would suspect that's that's kind of what my goal is and my objective so as as examples to even expand more on the what i would say the business owners advisory team should look like uh, you have a, an employee benefits firm or you have a group benefits firm that's helping them with their employee benefits. You have a potential separate advisor that's helping them with their retirement plan. Uh, all of those things. And, and I think we can all relate as professionals, as entrepreneurs ourselves, that when we write things down, 
things tend to get accomplished or we brainstorm a little more because it's, it's on paper. And then when I can bring these thought leaders and these successful business leaders and these other advisors or centers of influence together and on different, on different podcasts shows, it, it, it does a few things. A, I think it's going to give some resources and some, and some opportunities for, for successful business owners to hear other struggles from other successful business owners. So some might actually say, oh, wait a second, I've got that issue as well. And I'm glad to hear that Joe over here has some of the similar struggles or, 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 or roadblocks that I have. And then the other thing that I think it does is when you have a business owner on and you have them talk about okay, how long have you been in business? What has worked? What is not working? What would you say your biggest struggle is right now? It gets that business owner really thinking about, well, you know what? Wait a second. I, I, Nick, I actually thought this was my biggest struggle, but now that I'm talking to you and now that I'm hearing, I listened to the last couple episodes and I heard yeah. another business owner talk about this, and actually, I didn't even think about that, but that is something that I'm struggling with. So as an example, yeah. you know what? It, one of the big ones I hear all the time now from, from business owners, from, from potential clients, existing clients is, you know what? After, the, after what everyone's calling the great resignation, a lot of people are struggling with retaining talent. So yeah. a lot of the struggles have been, how do we put some plans in place that are going to be out of the box thinking that are going to be out of the norm of just a retirement plan. Okay. Well, a lot of, a lot of owners and a lot of, um, a lot of HR professionals that I've talked to over the last six to 12 months, it's, it's been having conversations around what about, have you, have you ever considered a stay bonus? Or have you ever considered mm. what, you know, this is a little dated term, but, you know, we, we've used the term golden handcuff, yeah. which, is a, which is an over and above or an executive benefit type plan to where the owner decides how much to contribute and the owner specifies if you do this, you will get this and this vests over this time. So as an example, the owner could say, you know what, um, I, I really value you. You're an important piece of our growth over the last five years, as an example, and I want to contribute to an executive benefit plan for you. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in $5,000 a year or some do a percentage of their salary, and I'm going to do that for the next five years, and as long as you stay, though, the example, as long as you stay 10 years, you vest that entirely. Or they can also structure it as, I'm going to do it indefinitely, and as long as you stay five years, it vests. If it doesn't, here's the vesting schedule. And because they're non-ERISA plans, meaning they're not specific to like a, like a normal 401k or 403b right. or things like that. They're not overseen by ERISA. So the business owner has a lot more flexibility to do things like that. So when we talk about, hey, what are your, what are your biggest roadblocks or what's your biggest struggle right now? It, it, and, and we can have some of those thought leaders on. We can have some of those other business owners and those other advisors on giving them and sharing, as you said, Mike, collaborating. I just think it's, you know, my vision is just that this is going to be a huge training resource conglomerate. To yeah. where we're all kind of putting our heads together, we're all trying to help be a resource, and whether we officially work together or not, that doesn't really matter. Um, you know, and, and I also know, and, and this is just me speaking off some of the people I know in the community, I mean, I know young professionals, young business owners that have really made it through COVID ha are still growing that, you know, I, those are, those are individuals that I want to take a step back and say, Hey, you know what? Uh, you know, I know you're still in growth mode, but I'd love to have you come on the podcast and just share yeah. your experience because 
you, you, you are the type of entrepreneur and business owner that a lot of these younger generation or these younger professionals aspire to be. And it's the same thing with having maybe a, a more seasoned business owner, you know, on the podcast, you know, someone that's been in business 15, 20, 25 years talking about all the changes that his or her business has gone through over that time and the different struggles they've had and how they've overcome them. You know, let me tell you something. When you say that one point right there, you, all of this uh, that you're mentioning leading up to that one point makes me think this. Sometimes business owners, entrepreneurs feel like they're on an island and their struggles are just their own and they're just like, oh, this is just uh, insurmountable. But when they start hearing that, oh, well, that's, you, you, you might be in a different industry than mine, but you've got a similar struggle and it kind of makes them feel like, okay, Wow, that I'm I'm not really unique and different and and off off the charts and that that makes me feel better and and oh you are showing ways that you overcame and worked through this that's really cool so I think that that's a huge aspect a huge element and then the other thing that I'll I'll bring up to you and you can comment on both of these at, at the same time. Um, I think that a lot of times in business, there's nothing wrong with, you know, promoting a webinar and having signups and even charging for the information. But the cool thing with what you're talking about doing here is a pure giving, serving, educating, being an advocate for the business leaders in Michigan and where they can all come alongside and learn from each other. And when you listen to a podcast, you click the um, audio, whether it's iTunes or Spotify or wherever you're listening to, and you listen. You don't have to feel like you're getting pitched or sold or something. And that to me is such a refreshing approach to helping your business community. You know, and, and, and Mike, I, I couldn't agree more with what you just said. I think my industry as a, as a whole has a negative kind of type to it. I mean, it's, it's yeah. very, you know, very, it's known as salesy. It's known as you just want to get my money. Yeah. You just want to sell me insurance or sell me annuities or whatever it may be. And I really, you know, I, I've taken this approach over, over a period of time now when it comes to educating individuals and families and professionals. And, and I really feel like there is some opportunities to be able to do similar things for the business community. And that's the biggest reason why I wanted to do something like this. I, I really started thinking about it. I really started saying, okay, I want to make an impact in my community. I want to bring some of these, these, these experts, these thought leaders, these successful owners together so that we can all collaborate and share different ideas and different thoughts. And, I think that, you know, I think a lot of people, when they look at things like this, oh, I want to create this, or I want to do that, sometimes it can be overwhelming. Sometimes it yeah. can be, well, what am I going to do? How is this going to look? What do I really want to accomplish from this? And part of what I've done so far and what I'm going to continue doing, I mean, Mike, myself as an entrepreneur and, and someone who's been in my industry for over 20 years now, well... I've built 20 years of relationships yeah. and those relationships come in all shapes and sizes. And I know a lot of other financial advisors. I know a lot of other financial planners. I know a lot of CPAs. I know a lot of attorneys, a lot of insurance specialists, group benefits people. I know a lot of people that I would consider experts or a, a specific area of expertise that they have. And I just really started thinking, how can I make an impact in my community? I'm already trying to do that through some of my workshops and educating the community from an individual or a family standpoint. How do I do that in the business space? And yeah. that's really where Michigan business leaders was kind of formed. I, I kind of said, you know what, this is, this is something that makes a heck of a lot of sense. I think there's a big disconnect for from the education and from some of the advanced strategies that business owners are not getting from a planning perspective 
because some financial advisors may not be experts in this area or some CPAs may not have enough knowledge, even though they know from a tax perspective, it could be a huge benefit to the business owner. And one example is some of these executive benefit type plans and others are things like pension plans. You know, we all talk about, aren't, Nick, aren't pensions going away? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. In the big corporate world, they are. Uh, I, I, I've actually added pension plans and additional qualified plans to small businesses over the last five to 10 years because business owners are always looking for ways to, to come up with how do I retain key employees? How do I add tax savings for myself? How do I save you know, a lot more money than just the typical 20 or 25,000, depending on your age in a, in, a, in a simple 401k? Or how do I save more than a, than a 401k in profit sharing or a SEP that's, you know, the max is like 55? How, how do I save more than that? If I'm making a half million dollars a year, uh, you know, after expenses in my business, which doesn't mean necessarily that my gross revenue is a huge amount. I mean, you could very easily have a gross revenue from a business owner standpoint at seven fifty or a million dollars, but just not have you know only have twenty five percent of that as an expense or forty percent of that as an expense, and the owner's like, okay, I'm, my my income is four or five hundred thousand. You know, I don't really have a lot of options over and above the traditional, right? Well, no. Maybe. There's, yeah, there's, maybe. Yeah, there, there, maybe. There's, but there's types of pension plans. There's types of, of additional strategies that we might be able to do on a tax-favored basis that, that based on their age, because, again, it's a pension, we, they might be able to defer 200000 mm -hmm. or 150000 And those are things that most business owners don't know about because they're so busy running yep. their business because that's how they got successful. Yep. And, and, and they feel it's almost like um, you just, you, you're so busy and you don't really have the time to go out and learn new things. And then of, of course the notes that you learned from that one weekend seminar, then, Oh, they never got implemented. Whereas in this um, uh, situation where we're talking about here, learning from some educational podcast and, and even in a fun, entertaining, conversational way, you're going to pick up a nugget that is like, Ooh, that makes sense because it's not drinking out of a fire hose, like a three day seminar that you are worried that you're away from your business. And now you got to learn all this and then you got to go back and implement it all. Forget about it. But maybe that one short podcast episode you're listening to, you know, Ooh, that's a, that's a learning night. Ooh, that was really interesting. And I think that just the mode of the learning with this kind of a concept and the reason I say that is I find myself doing it. I read books voraciously. I listen to podcasts all the time. And there's so many times that I pick up one little nugget from a, a podcast episode and I'll write it down and I'll implement it or rereading a book. Oh, that I, I, I read this before, but ooh, this one now is coming to light. So I think that this is such a cutting edge way to bring knowledge to the community as well as tying together these thought leaders. So I really applaud what you're doing here. So let's wrap up with uh, any final thoughts that you have here on, on the launch of your podcast and then uh, what's the best way people can reach out and even learn from uh, what you guys are doing. So last final thoughts are, you know, I, I did want to mention, you know, some of the ways that I'm looking to even expand my network and, and again, expand resources for business, business leaders, thought leaders is, is I, I'm, I'm getting involved with some of the, the employer organizations that, that I, you know, I've done some things with in the past, but haven't been really involved and I'm trying to do more. So as an example is uh, with the ASE here in Michigan, the American Society of Employers, with some of the chamber organizations, with, um, with some of the, the, the organizations like SHRM for, for HR professionals. Those are some of the things that I'm trying to incorporate so that when I have those conversations, I'm like, yeah, we have a podcast and I'd love to have you on and talk about some of the struggles you have as an HR director or an HR professional of 
you know, a 200 employee company that you, that you work at. Those are just some of the things that, you know, we're trying to do. SBAM is another big one that we're trying to, we're trying to talk to, you know, and these are things, some of them are relationships I already have. And some of them I'm reaching out to some of my network to say, who should I talk to? Who do you think would make sense? You know, one of my, one of my friends who's, involved in the business community that knows a lot of these people brought up yesterday. I didn't even think about it. Ann Arbor spark as an example. And, and, and those are things that it, me, I'm like, you know, that's a great idea. They are going to have some people in the business community that could again, learn from this or want to be a guest on the podcast to share some of their story. And those are, that's the platform we want to create. Yeah. I love it. I so, think, it, it, yeah, platform learning and it it feeds upon itself, and people start you know engaging, and and that's really huge. And and through your experiences, you know, people in rather, it's not going to be like let's air dirty laundry struggle, but it's like look, here's a trend I see in the industry. I see this in our organization, and talking conceptually, not specifically to badmouth our own organization. So I think that that's one thing that people need to realize is it's like you know, hey, we're just going to say here's some lessons learned. It's not going to be airing dirty laundry. It's just going to be like, hey, here's some ways you can avoid whatever. And I think that's a really fun way to learn from each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so yeah, so, you know, the, the, um, the, uh, the website or the URL for the podcast is, is going to be michiganbusinessleaders.com. And, um, you know, you can obviously currently, um, we have our, our company website, which is inspireyourretirement.com. Those are probably the best ways to, you know, to, to get in touch. And especially if you want to be, you, you know, you want to have a conversation about being on the podcast, or if you, you, you have some thoughts on it, I, I'm looking for feedback. I want ideas. I yeah. want thoughts from the community. Excellent. Well, Nick, it's really uh, been a pleasure talking with you. I love your vision of where you're taking this uh, this platform, and I wish you all the best. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate uh, the opportunity to be on again. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.